All right. Good afternoon and welcome everyone back to CRC Music in the studio. We have a special final presentation of the season for you, our last student spotlight. My name is Max Kiesner, Professor of Instrumental Music here, and I'm with Professor Omari Tao, Professor hello, hello, hello. of Choral Music. How right. are you? I am, I am good, you know? Yeah. I'm good, yeah. <laughs> We're kind of at the finish line and, you know, of a very arduous, arduous race. So, uh, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about it. Endorphins Great. kicking in. How about yourself? How are you doing? Doing really well, doing really well. Um, like yourself, I can't believe it's the end of the semester. This really kind of um, just went so fast. And I see some people already commenting how quick <laughs> this semester went as well. Um, and, you know, I just have to say that this has been a really interesting and very fruitful experience. I think very productive for a lot of students. Um, just to start off on that note, you know, a lot of people are having different experiences in this mm. particular format, learning and, and uh, you know, kind of being in school, doing school, as we might say. But um, overall, right. so, some of the comments I've received from students was, man, I've really felt myself progress this semester. I've really gotten better at recording. I feel like I've gained a skill that I never would have had the chance to gain otherwise. And I just see so much progress and so much, um, you know, uh, really fruitful kind of efforts uh, happening out there. And it's really encouraging to see all the students take this um, experience and, to, and make it a really positive thing for them professionally. Absolutely. There are students who are presenting today who this is their first time ever doing sort of multi-track vocal work. And um, and it's it sounds amazing. And it's to me, that's that sort of discovery moment is, is always so wonderful that you sort of go, oh, I, I've learned that new skill, like you said. And also just sort of unlocked access to new potential and creativity. Just all of a sudden, oh, I have a new tool and I can do something totally different, add it to my toolkit. It's right. totally amazing. Yeah, it's great. It's the, it's the thing that we get a chance to work on in our field, like thinking outside of the box, you know, and, and having all options be available to us as creative artists. And I think our students are really starting to see that these possibilities are there and they're not constricted to one way of doing things. And um, uh, I'm really excited to hear what we have today from, from your <laughs> students, from the choral students. Um, we have some presentations from the instrumental group, of course, and we have um, a number of student arrangements and compositions, which I'm very excited to mm -hmm. uh, present to you as well. So I think we're yeah. going to start with some of your students' performances. We yeah? are. We're going to start with a couple of those uh, solo works. A uh, couple of students prepared some solo uh, work today. Gabriel, if you could bring up my fancy slides, or am I supposed to do that? Um, I think you're doing it. Okay, great. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, uh, there's my fancy slide first to sort of let you all know that um, we do have uh, three full on choirs at CRC. Um, I'll mention a little bit about what's supposed to happen in the fall um, with all those choirs as well. But we're very happy to have different opportunities for singers to grow and thrive. And it's been a little different this year. We had kind of a combined choral experience. I think the same thing is true in instrumental, right? Um, and so that helped us to keep our numbers and it also helped us to really sort of uh, um, move through music by um, uh, learning a lot about the, the you, go ahead, you can go to the next slide, it's fine. Um, but learn from, in a sort of mentorship manner, we've got some people who are quite advanced and some who are quite green and new at this. And it's good to sort of learn from either, from any one of those students. The first voice we have to hear is Dade on the two and I, and Dade is uh, one of our voice majors here. And Dade, we actually met, was uh, playing guitar and in one of the classes and taking different courses all over, but liked to sing. And uh, I said, definitely you've got to get in my class. And uh, he's moved through our program quite beautifully and um, is actually graduating and heading out this semester, finishing his whole program. Um, and uh, he put together this piece, Never, uh, Never Leave Me Alone, he actually, uh, by 213 or um, Nate Dog and that crew. So you can see the lyrics um, down there. Um, and he arranged and played this himself. So um, we're excited about uh, this performance. So uh, let's take a listen to Never Leave Me Alone as performed by Dade on the two and I. <laughs> They 
tell me that temptation Oh, it's very hard to resist Yeah, tell me that you want me I try to hide my feelings, the OG's is supposed to feel like this Call it what you want to I don't even know what this is You've got me singing in the morning You bring me breakfast in my bed and when it hurts you rub my head I'll ask you one time only won't you be there when it's hectic when I don't ever hit a record Never leave me alone Never leave me alone Never leave me alone Alone Never leave me alone I've traveled so many Places. I've seen so many faces And there were times I didn't think I'd make it through I've went through so many phases That got me so many cases Distraction gone then what you gonna do? Ooh. Guess I'll call my lady Tell her to kiss my baby Tell me the crime is all I know how to do Tell him his daddy sorry Let him know all about me There's one more thing I really want you to do Never leave me alone Never leave me alone Leave me alone Never leave me alone Never Never leave me alone Leave me alone Never leave me alone Alone All alone Be left alone On my own All alone On my own Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. Nice arrangement, taking it and flipping it all around. Congratulations on this new talent or a new skill of multi track um, layering um, of the voice and your instruments, too, right? Um, I, I sort of hear the beginnings of something. I hear, mm -hmm. like, you know, there's going to be a lot more voices, there's going to be a lot more instruments. Um, so, congratulations on your performance i want to do a collaboration with you Dave. if you're out there <laughs> let's get together i want to do i want to do so fly okay as long as you're in the <laughs> so fly <clears throat> with the instrumental music ensemble you say hey all right let's do it i love it i love it um if dade i don't know if dade is it out there right now he'll watch this but def i'll make sure that he does um dade is heading to uc riverside in the fall so uh, we're proud of him for making Congrats. these advancements on too. All right, so next up we have another soloist who has created a multi-track uh, performance. This is um, Anaya Morris um, singing Have Mercy by Aaron Allen Kane. Um, and uh, Anaya has created, she says here, about 15 different layers of vocals to create this project. Um, I got sort of Jacob Collier vibes when I was thinking about all the 
the many, many, many voices one can add. And I'm definitely a proud papa in terms of a, being a, Anaya's voice teacher because I do the same thing with a lot, a lot of layering of voices in my own recording. I think it's so much fun to play with the voices, its own sort of soundscape. Um, Anaya is an award winner this year uh, with Sacramento Master Singers as uh, their first place choral, young choral scholar. And she also um, was one of the recipients of the Nina Simone Music in Action Scholarship here at CRC. Uh, so here is her performance of this piece that she started in band lab, but used cakewalk to put together called Have Mercy. Let's take a listen.
congratulations, Naya. Beautiful. Nice. Really cool. I could see some uh, live loop looping the voice action. That would be so cool to sort of see that happen in front of us, you know? Some tune yards kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> that reminded me of the Sunday service choir, kind of like the way that they layer. Um, yeah. Very powerful. Very powerful. Wonderful, Beautiful. wonderful. And I'm so glad to hear everyone experimenting and playing and, and, and creating content for their portfolios. Right, something you put in your folder and say, "I have something." Someone need to hear you sing. Someone need to hear you perform or play. Here it is. Here's a little example of what you can do. Uh, yeah, Evan says it, it sounds like a full choir. That would be cool to do with a big group. Wouldn't that be nice? Big, nice range. He sang like low A flat, I think. Ooh, and then super high notes as well. Very, very cool. Thank you so very much, Anaya. Um, great. And up, up, I just let a reminder to everyone who's watching, it's always better to put your headphones on and take a listen because there's all kinds of different things going on. There's different qualities of uh, recording equipment that you're going to hear. But um, as people mix the sound, they're going to put it side to side. So you want to check that out. Um, uh, yeah. So let's take a listen to a couple more pieces. We're going to spread it out. This time we're going to have a duet. And it's got a video to go with it. And it's by Simone Brown and Andrea Chia, working all the way around the world. Simone Brown is currently in Australia and Andrea Chia is in Virginia. They're not even here in California. So they worked um, on from either sides of the world to put together this duet. I mean, we are truly international. <laughs> Don't let them uh, forget that. Uh, this is a duet uh, from a 90s, uh, a film actually uh let's see and I, oh they're gonna he's moving the changing it up so that he can put the audio on uh, but it was performed by mandy moore in the film and a cancer survivor um, someone who's suffering from cancer actually a patient um finds sort of divine inspiration and believes that only hope as she says um uh will and faith in god will uh, save her or um, provide her with the kind of relief that she needs um, in this difficult time. So here's a duet by Simone and Andrea.
Lovely. Lovely. Nice job. Nice Very job, good. Too. Yeah. Really well done. I'm, I'm, I always I think about the final product and I sort of I love uh, that you and I <laughs> get to see um, the, the sausage being made, you know, <laughs> the work that it takes to get to the final product and our audiences don't usually get to see that, but it's such an arduous journey. I think I've used that word twice now. Um, I don't usually use that word, but <laughs> it's been, um, you know, it's been a lot of work that goes into these performances and I'm so glad they took the extra step to make the video. You weren't actually our audience. You weren't going to get a video, um, but I'm glad that they went ahead and created one for you. So I thought that was a perfect accompaniment to the creation that they made, which was a solo that they turned into a duet and created harmonies for it too. Those were not originally written. So congratulations. Um, another group we have um, is a quartet and they are performing a piece uh, from, uh, I've just lost the musical, uh, the musical, uh, someone write it in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> the song is called A Million Dreams by, um, oh, The Greatest Showman. Sorry, thank you. The Greatest Showman by Pasek and Paul. Um, and it's a quartet sung by Hosta Alakozai, Stanley Blackshire, Lilia Karsten, and Annabelle Terry. Um, and they put together this sort of collage of, of uh, images to go along with this Million Dreams song that you've heard a lot. It's a very popular song from uh, the show sort of uh, talking about all the different things that this uh, showman, uh, P.T. Barnum, was putting together a great cir circus, uh, the greatest show on earth. Um, all the dreams, there's so many different ideas about it, uh, about uh, how it can come to be, uh, that it's hard to sleep, a million dreams. So let's take a, a view at this video that they've created for us.
for the world we're gonna make. However big, however small, let me be a part of it all. Share your dreams with me. You may be right, you may be wrong, but say that you'll bring me along to the world you see, to the world Congratulations, everyone. Lovely. Nice visuals to go along with the lovely vocal performance. Thank you. That was quite lovely. Again, creating some harmonies for yourself, stretching yourselves. Um, it's really quite wonderful to hear all the different voices. Um, not everyone's a music major, and um, not everyone's a voice major. Um, sometimes they play different instruments, etc. So it's really great to see people pulling together to create something for this. Um, and that is it for my first section of vocal music. We're going to switch things up and hear some instrumental music now. Great. Yeah. Let me uh, share <clears throat> something with you all. Let's see. And um, just to just to kind of mirror what you were talking about, um, Omari, a lot of our students in this program are not majors, many of them are, of course, enrolled in these courses because it's uh, part of what we do here. Um, but many of our students are just students who love to play music. And so the members of the instrumental music ensemble are from the orchestra class or jazz band class and the concert band class. And um, I really loved hearing your selections because it seems like this is music or repertoire that they really loved and kind of chose themselves, or at least mm -hmm. it appears that yeah, way. Is that they true? They did. They chose you can they tell. themselves. <laughs> right? yes, I mean, you can, you can tell, like when a teacher <laughs> assigns something versus when a student chooses it themselves. Absolutely. There's more ownership, right? And so there's kind of two parts to our course where I have, you know, teacher assigned work, yes. and then we have student uh, um, selected work. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to start with the, the big pieces first, the ones that I've selected for the ensemble. And these are all small group pieces that have been arranged for a large ensemble. The first one is from Florence Price, who is an African-American mm. composer, um, who has been recently rediscovered, I suppose, in the past uh, decade or so. Um, getting a lot more play now than she uh, that she used to and this piece is called adoration we'll start with that and then we'll move on to a piece called la comparsita which is a tango from a um, uruguayan composer and uh, tango is ultimately a, one of the genres that i default to if i ever want to just like relax you know have a dinner party <laughs> thing you know to put on that kind of music you know tango is just it it just Fantastic. does something, you know what I yeah. mean? I think the students really connected with it as well. Some, some of them have never played tango before. So we have those two pieces and um, I'd love to share them with you now. Here we go. This is Adoration by Florence Price. <laughs> Thank you. 
Did we lose our feed? Looks like we have. Oh, um, yes. Our, I'm so sorry about that. Our IA okay. says we did lose our feed. <laughs> well, I'm so sorry about that, everybody. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Okay. Oh, I <laughs> a just cliffhanger. Yeah. A cliff <laughs> I'm so sorry about that, everyone. It's such a beautiful piece, <laughs> and um, I did not uh, not intend to pause it in the middle of a, a phrase. <laughs> like Absolutely that. <laughs> lovely. That piece, oddly enough, reminds me of college, just because I remember hearing it and thinking, oh. "What a beautiful, just haunting melody. Just gorgeous. Gorgeous." Unbelievable. Gorgeous. It's, it's mm -hmm. so romantic and yes. uh, rich, rich harmonies. And it's one of the reasons why, why I chose it, especially because we have um, some really amazing players in the group, uh, mm -hmm. amazing violinists and uh, hammered dulcimer players and, and so on and so forth. People who can really play this kind of music with a lot of expressive capacity. So um, I think along those lines, you know, you choose repertoire for the people you have, right? You play music yes. with the people in front of you. So. Um, it's, you know, knowing that we had violinists and great guitar players and stuff like this, I, I had to choose this tango. So this is La Cumparsita, and I will reshare, and I will not touch any buttons <laughs> once I press play. I swear to God, everyone, you'll... <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay, here we go. So, again, La Cumparsita, and I know in, in town there are some tango lessons if you're interested uh you know dance and music often go hand in hand and i think it's one of the things that we really need to consider when we're looking at the kinds of music that we uh are listening to either it's dance music or it's a song right one of two kinds generally speaking and um this is one of the more popular tangos out there so if you've been to tango on the river or taken any tango lessons you probably will be familiar with this piece tell us about it in the chat <laughs> Thank you. 
Nice. <laughs> ah, yes, a tango. Oh, I love it. I love it. I like. Um, I like how your group, um, your sound is too. Your mix. It's it, both of the pieces that I've heard today. Sort of the way. I mean, everyone's coming from so many different places and different microphones and different things like that. But the sound together has this particular kind of classic quality to me. When I when I hear it, I go. This is like I feel like I'm putting on a record and I'm listening to oh, yeah. to uh, um, to a band of yesteryear, nice, giving yeah. us an insight. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of that ambient noise can be very yeah. helpful. Oh, know. absolutely, right. A seventy-eight, good. Right, yes. Yeah, so <laughs> these recording techniques is it's you know it's really hard, especially because we have uh, you know we're all playing different instruments, you know, mm -hmm. and each instrument has a specific recording technique. Yes. And this is not a recording technique course. So right. everybody is <laughs> just trying to figure it out because you mic a saxophone differently than you mic a trombone because they're direct and indirect instruments. And mm -hmm. you would you mic a hammered dulcimer very differently than you would a guitar, than you would a bass. And so it's it's really a challenge to get all these voices to sound homogenous. You know what yes. I mean? Like because they are they're in the not, same room. Sort of, well, I mean, if, yeah. I think what's great is the mix sounds like they're at least in the same place that they've created this in the same building or studio or something like that, right? Um, even though it's 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 got just a, a quality to it that makes it sound like even though they're not on the same microphones, mm -hmm. there's something that is still quite unified about it. So that's a, a yeah kudos to the ensemble and to the mixer is that you or <laughs> do you have... i'm not going to admit or deny <laughs> any of that <laughs> so but I'll, I'll thank you you and I'll i will you keep it <laughs> you and i will keep that between us yes yeah, i'll thank you on behalf of whoever it was <laughs> no great job everybody um fun really fun music and i uh, hope to do more of that in in the fall so Yes, fantastic. Let us know in the chat, we were talking about this before, if you'd be interested in a music slash dance course, a class that would help sort of marry these two concepts, learning about the music and the dances associated with them, right? We know what a tango sounds like, but do you know how to dance it? Or have you ever even tried a step or two? Let us know what you think about that. Um, you might be horrified by the idea or you might think it's really fun. Um, <laughs> so um, is it my turn now? Yes, sir. Okay, fantastic. Great, we've got two more pieces from the choir. Um, this time it's the full ensemble. And the first thing we're doing is an audio only piece. It's a chant, um, an Alleluia chant. Um, just for the choral members who are out there, um, there is a video that is on its way. It is not complete yet, but we have an audio, um, uh, the larger portion of the piece to hear um, an excerpt of this chant. Sue Johnson is a, a uh, an Australian composer, educator, etc., and uh, we performed one of her pieces uh, earlier called Sister My Sister, and uh, she sent me this additional piece. She's a living composer. She sent me this additional piece, which she said you could use it as a performance piece or as a warm-up, and it's just the words Alleluia, uh, which offers many different vowels for the singer to practice, um, but it's also sort of done in uh, as a layering, as a wrap, not a round, but in layering the five parts on top of it. It's five uh, different uh, interlocking parts. And so um, it starts off with a solo from uh, a little brief solo by Annabelle Terry, and then continues on and all of the singers layer upon their own voices to create this 
sound of the Alleluia chant. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Good job, choir. That's just a part of it. And uh, we'll add a video to go along with it when it gets posted on YouTube. So those of you who are here today and want to let people know about your uh, performances, you can send them to YouTube and you'll get quote unquote bonus material. <laughs> so uh, so uh, good job. Um, I like that piece just as a learning tool. It'd be great to sing it live with one another, but it's also give us, give us an opportunity to layer. So the, so the students sang multiple parts on that. Um, in the next piece, they did not sing multiple parts. They maybe doubled their own part, uh, but the next piece is called Soon We Will Be Done. It is an arrangement of a spiritual called Soon I Will, Soon I Will Be Done with the Troubles of the World. And it's arranged by Kyle Peterson. It's a really powerful, wonderful piece. Um, on the piano, uh, we have Narmina Soltanova, who is our staff pianist. And we're, we're so very grateful to her for her support of our students and our preparation practice. She um, played for one of the duets earlier as well. Um, in this piece, um, Kyle Peterson takes uh, the spiritual, uh, soon I will be done with the trouble of the world, and, um, and mixes it with a contemporary sort of call to action. Um, in a quote for this, for this uh, piece, he says that he is writing this piece, he wrote this piece 
uh, sorry, I'll just quote him. I am writing this program note to the song not long after George Floyd was killed in Minneapolis, Minnesota on May 25th, 2020. As a Minneapolis area resident for the past 25 years, I wanna take a more active role in working towards justice in my community. Um, he goes on to say how the proceeds of the song will go to, to benefit a certain organization. Um, but the concept behind this piece uh, is that it incorporates both the traditional song, um, some original material, um, and which uh, sort of, if you understand how spirituals work, they're very repetitive and they have call and response associated with their format and structure. Um, but they're, because of their repetitive nature, there's room for improvisation and all kinds of other things. And one of the things he added was spoken word. And so our singers put on um, some spoken word on top of, the, at the end of this, um, this wonderful piece. Anyway, this is an arrangement of Soon I Will Be Done called Soon We Will Be Done, arranged by Kyle Peterson. There's a, a video for us to watch to enjoy their performance. One, two, one, one, two. Done with the hatred and done with war. Come lift the lonely, come lift up the war. Done with the hatred and done with war. Come lift the lonely, come lift up the war. Done with the hatred and done with war. Come lift the lonely, come lift up the war. Racism and the sexism and all the isms and prisons that bind us, that blind us from the hurt of another. I want to be done. I want to be done. Done with addiction, with any affliction that takes a hold and won't let go. Speaks and lies of fiction. Yeah, I want to be, be done. done. Done with the violence and the silence and facing the injustice, but I wonder if you trust us if lovers are comfortable. I want to be done. Done with the violence and the silence when facing injustice, but I wonder if you trust us if love was our comfort. We'll be done with the trouble. Good job, choir. Thank you very much to uh, Narmina Soltanova, our pianist. Um, 
boy, oh boy, it was really difficult to put this together. We tried so many ways to get the piano, a live piano and not just, <laughs> not just our MIDI sounds on the keyboard. And so we actually being vaccinated, we actually met and we took the recording and we put it together with actual live piano with recorded vocals. Wild, very crazy. But it was so great to finally actually have <laughs> been in the presence of a real pianist um, in, in person. So choir will be back on ground in the fall. Um, and so please, please, please sign up for all those classes, sign up for instrumental classes, sign up for everything. Um, so we can fill those courses and, and lift our voices in many, many ways. So anyway, congratulations, choir. Thank you so much for all the things that you've done this semester. Um, we've got more music though. We've got more music. So let's take yeah. a listen to some more. Yeah, but I'm gonna turn it over to our <laughs> instructional assistant and um, an instructor here, Gabriel Rivera, to present the last three pieces <laughs> because I clearly <laughs> cannot do a super job <laughs> of it. Um, <laughs> No, I, the last three students I did not include in the in the other slide because I wanted to feature them individually in their own presentations, and we'll play all mm -hmm. three of these pieces uh, right in a row with, without any uh, description in between. Um, so I I, I just want to say that I'm really really impressed and really really proud of these these three students specifically because um, they've done something which is very courageous. First, they've taken a piece and transcribed it, meaning they've they've listened to it and written down all the notes for every wow. instrument. So all all. 20 parts, all 15 parts or whatever it is, they transcribed it and arranged it for our ensemble mm. and made it tailor-made to our group, uh, which has some very different instruments in it. As I mentioned before, violin and hammered dulcimer and you know, uh, two guitars and a bass, and all, all kinds of stuff. So it's, it's really challenging. Uh, so we have two transcription arrangements and we have one composition um, which has been expanded into a large group instrumentation. So the first one we're going to hear is a Wallace and Gromit theme song. Oh, from, I love Wallace and Gromit. Yeah, from The Curse of the <laughs> Were-Rabbit. This is called Antipasto to the Rescue. This is Joshua <laughs> Elmore's arrangement and transcription. Unbelievable. It's so good. Um, and then we're going to um, put Evan French's composition, his original piece, Stardust, uh, mm. in the middle. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous, very mature uh, composition, gorgeous melody. Um, and then we're going to finish with a piece called Blissful from this game called The Blob, which was done by Lena Krausen. And um, yeah, it's just a fantastic, fantastic arrangement and transcription. <laughs> um, really fun. And I'm so excited for them. And I uh, hope they get a chance to do more of this in the future. Um, and that's you know one of the great benefits of these this program that we have the opportunity to feature student work like this and that they have a a place to showcase and, and kind of experiment um, with different kinds of kinds of things. So, without awesome. further ado, here we go. Thank you. 
I think we lost the last few. Oh too. no! End of slideshow. Is how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was super awesome! Congratulations. Congratulations to everyone! Wow. Yeah, we'll get all of those things um, fixed up before they go up on YouTube. Just so you know, you don't have to worry about them not yeah. that you know, living in perpetuity <laughs> with the cutout. Um, Fantastic, Max. Those are really so impressive and vibrant and wonderful. Yeah, Just absolutely well done. Blown away, and and so I'm I'm so grateful to them for taking on the challenge because it it is a huge challenge, right? It's like writing a book. You know, it's you it's all the parts, it's all the words, it's all the absolutely. Chapters, you know, <laughs> so, absolutely. Uh, and uh, I'm so happy that they had a chance to have those played and. Um, Joshua and Lena are leaving us next semester. They're transferring out to uh, Citizen correct. West and some other places. So, um, congratulations! Yeah, congratulations! Yes, to you, all. you are free, <laughs> <laughs> sort of from us, but now on to other <laughs> obligations. Yeah. No, really great, and they and they will be featured. Our music majors, our our applied music majors, are featured in a recital next Wednesday at seven p.m. Um, I have seen the recital already. It's it's a pre-recorded situation. They have to do this in you know, distance. So they've already put together a wonderful series of performances for you, um, sort of the culminating project in their solo repertoire. So um, while this was very impressive today, all the work that they did with one another, they got to hone their own personal crafts in other ways for the recital on Wednesday. So you don't wanna miss that as well. But really congratulations to everyone. This has been a wonderful, end of the year student spotlight. So thank you so very much for joining us. Um, I, I have nothing more to say uh, <laughs> unless yeah. you do, Max. No, just thank you to everyone at CRC who supports this, all of our students who are return viewers, um, those people who are joining us for the first time, thank you for joining us. Um, yes. We really love putting on this series. Of course, this is just one offering that we have in a, a rotating series of events throughout the semester. So we will be back uh, doing the same thing this fall with a whole new lineup of guest artists and guest performances and all kinds of things. So stay tuned for that. Make sure to bookmark our events calendar on your, your desktop web browser. And uh, yeah, we'll hope to see you in the fall. Absolutely. Definitely. We will certainly see you in the fall and we'll, we'll find one another over the summer. Now that there are all kinds of changes to our uh, new uh, mandates and Thanks. Yes. <laughs> Get out and enjoy this wonderful summer. Thank yes. you so much for being a part of what we're doing here at CRC. Be well. Take care. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs>